What I long for in my freshmen, sophomore, and juniors is true community. Like community. Where a live is just the icing on the cake to what's been going on Monday through Saturday. Um, I want to get you guys in a position where you are no longer like consumers of church. Where you just come, church is just something to do, it's an event. Like We're trying to get this a lifestyle for you guys. To grow roots in your heart to where you understand that the rubber meets the road when you leave here. And then when you come, we want it to be a celebration of what's been going on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Where you guys are taking what you have heard and then going to your schools in great expectation of just being obedient. And then watching God show up. And so, I've really been hanging out in Luke, or Acts chapter 2. It's verses 42 through 47, just FYI. We're going to be looking at those five verses. And here's leaders. I know I didn't really give you that big of a heads up. So even my leaders, some of this will be a new to them. Um, but, but here's kind of where I want this to go. And uh, here's kind of the big idea of this passage before we read it. This is what I long for for our youth group. Like if you could sum up a passage of scripture, and if you could say, Tim, what is like one thing you want for your group? I would say Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. It's entitled, The Fellowship of Believers. The Fellowship of Believers. And so, if you're here, and you have yet to surrender your life to Jesus, then this isn't really to you. Because you've yet to believe that Jesus is Lord. And that he is the way, the truth, and the life. You guys know here, like we, we put all of our poker chips in to the name of Jesus. There's no other name beside the name of Jesus. And, and so Paul is addressing the fellowship of believers. And, and if you're here and you don't fall into that category, like, man, I, I long to eat lunch with you or drink coffee and to talk about that. And I just want to share about why I surrendered my life to Jesus and what it's been like since I've done that. And I'm looking at leaders all over this room who have surrendered their lives to Jesus and are following him hard. Talk to them. Like, see what it's all about. If you're kicking the tires on Jesus, like, I, we're getting to a point in our youth group, man, where I'm going to start going hard after those who have yet to surrender their lives to Jesus. And I'm going to go even harder to those that think they're saved because of the family they come from or because of how much scripture you know, or just a lot of knowledge. Because you can even be deceived there. And so, as I read this passage, I'm thinking, man, I want this so badly for us, for you. Uh, and really the biblical truth, like the main idea that we can take from this is, is this. A community of believers united in Jesus should be identified by their fellowship their worship, and their sacrifice. So that should be a slide. Simon, I don't know if you see it or not. If it is, throw it up. That'd be awesome. So let's, let's really look at those three things. Okay? A community of believers united under the banner of Jesus um, should be identified by their fellowship. So let's talk about fellowship. Okay? What, what, that's a churchy word, okay? Like, it, it's rare to be at Eastside High School and see juniors be like, hello, brethren, I'll see you Saturday night for our fellowship at the, uh, the party. Like, that, that's a churchy word. But okay, well, we're going to talk about that. Believers united in Jesus should have fellowship. So what does that mean? Uh, the second thing is by their worship. We see that Paul is talking about that in the book of Acts. And so worship, okay, that's very, very vague, but that's going to be really big. And that's why I love that video that I showed you, that worship is more than a song. Like a lot of us think, oh man, I missed the time of worship. What? Yeah, the singing's over. Oh, okay, yeah, that's one 2,070th million of the puzzle. But we know that we're identified by our worship. Like, like worship took place Saturday morning at Brooklyn Elementary School. Worship the Lord through just waking up early, and going to do someone else's yard work. That's big. Worship can be when you leave here how you honor your parents. That's big. Worship can be going to that friend and just sharing Jesus with them, even though persecution could be coming your way. 
Like, there, there, we could go on and on about this one for a while with worship. And the third thing that Paul says is sacrifice. So sacrifice, okay? Like, what, what does sacrifice mean for you? Because a lot of you are like, I'll sacrifice the last chicken finger. Oh, yeah, you can have it. And you, like, want your medal. Like, ugh, that hurt. But, like, how are you sacrificing? And I'll go back to Saturday morning. You sacrificed your time, your energy. Some of my leaders, their time with their family. All of it. So Paul's talking about, like, man, believers united under the banner of Jesus. Like, these should be three things that flow from you in community. Fellowship with believers, that's big. Worshiping together. Sacrificing together. So when you go to life groups, like talk about this. How do we fellowship? Okay, that's a churchy word. That means how do we do things, events, life together? This is big. Like this is something I'm trying to do more and more to, to be in fellowship with people. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, that's hard for me because if I have people at the church or over at my house... I feel like I gotta be on. I'm at work. Right? I'm on the quick pastor's hat. So like I, I am finding so much freedom in just genuine, authentic fellowship. And, and sometimes the most beautiful fellowship can be, hey man, how are you doing? And your response is terrible. I'm drowning. Pray for me. Being real. Don't act like your fellowship is all smiles, knowing the right thing to say knowing the right things to do. And so when you go to life groups, that's a part of fellowship. Being with other believers, talking about Jesus, what it means to follow Jesus. So that's big. So what does fellowship look like for you? Uh, so let's read Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, with this biblical truth in mind that Paul is calling us to as believers. And I really want you guys to hit this hard. Talk about how you guys can sacrifice together. Maybe there's someone in your life group and their family's going through a really hard time. You can sacrifice by pulling together a few dollars, making them a meal, getting in the car, driving it to them, and giving it. Serving them. Sacrifice. Jesus says, live your life as a living sacrifice. You are a living sacrifice. And a lot of us, man, we think we wake up and the world revolves around us. Our needs. Man, if, if I could get you guys out of that mindset, the impact that we have for the kingdom is huge, massive. So, Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Let's just stop right there. Paul's saying they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer. So he's saying, like, they devoted themselves to sitting under good teaching, being under good authority. And, man, that's something that I commend you guys. If you're here, you're sitting under the teaching of the Word of God in community, in fellowship. They devoted themselves to that, whether it's in a life group that meets on Wednesday nights or Saturdays, whatever it is, they're devoted, like, they're committed. It's something that doesn't just happen when, when uh, it's convenient for them. Like they devoted themselves to it. And man, for some of you, like the vast majority of us in this room, like you're devoted. You're at youth group. You're at events. Like you, you are for the fellowship of believers. Paul's saying, right on. That's good. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And Jesus and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So breaking of bread, I love that one. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Tandem on Friday night, and let's hang out, and let Peter Shear get 100% of the proceeds to go towards an amazing cause. Let's break bread together. Let's eat. Let's pray together. I mean, I want to get it to where you're not just saying, hey, how can I pray for you? And then you really don't do it. Vote yourself to, to prayer. It says, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. So here's that language again of the supernatural, okay? When in our obedience, in fellowship of believers, united under Jesus, it's saying everyone was filled with awe. Like, that's awesome. At the many wonders and signs performed 
uh, by the apostles. Like one of the ways I get challenged with being on the North Hill staff is like to watch how I use the word awesome. This pizza is awesome. Like yeah, that pizza left you in awe. No, not really. It's good. Like man, we we really take that word and just drag it through the mud. Like it was awesome what was happening. They were left in awe. And verse 44 says, all the believers were together and had everything in common. (laughs) That's awesome. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Why? Because they're under the banner as believers in Jesus. Like, we have everything in common because we serve the same risen Savior. You might like different things and do different things, but it all comes back into that one stream flowing the name of Jesus. We have everything in common. You can't say, well, I don't have much in common with them. They're weird. They smell funny. I don't do community with them. No, 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 no. They're under the banner of Jesus. You have everything in common with each other. You are brothers and sisters. Look out for each other. Have each other's backs. Text each other. If you guys go to the same school, you better have each other's backs. In community. As believers, brothers and sisters, that's big, man. Like, look at how brothers and sisters act. Like, you're my brother, you drove me nuts. But man, if someone messed with me, you better watch out. He's in a, you're not going to like his reaction. We should, you know, we should do the same thing in community. So Paul's saying that, man, they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, when is the last time you sold property, your possessions, or like things that were a big deal to provide for people in need? So that's going back to this. Sacrifice. Like, that's what true community, as believers, do together. Talk about that life. How can you, by the time you leave, have a game plan for sacrifice? And start small. You don't have to go home and be like, Mom? We should sell our house. Okay, like that's probably not going to work. But have a game plan, because here's the deal. If you're not faithful in the small things, how are you going to be faithful in the big things? If you're not sacrificing 30 minutes of your time to pray for someone, how in the world are, is this going to be true for you that, that they sold property, they sold possessions to give to anyone who had need? Like that's what's up. I want that to define a live student ministry. That's so cool. Verse 46, every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. Translation, every Sunday night they continue to meet together at North Hills Community Church. That's big. Or, every day they can, you know, life groups, Wednesday night, Tuesday morning Bible study, Thursday morning D groups. Like, that's a big part of what they do. And they did this in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Like, it's so cool. Like, Tina Martin, I was just at her house a couple nights ago. We ate together. We, we played games. The seniors were there. Like, that's so cool. Like, I left with a new appreciation and a thankfulness for the Martin family that came through that type of community, which is so, so cool. Uh, so they broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. And enjoying the favor of all the people, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That's what I want for us. A live student ministry. Like that verse is for us. Praising God, enjoying the favor of all people. And then right here, and the Lord added to their number daily to those being saved. The supernatural. Something only God can do. I can't do that. I can't. Alan Bunn can't do that. The leaders in here, they can't do that. Like that's something we've got to really lean in to the Lord. And how does that happen? It happens through fellowship, worship, and sacrifice. That's big. You want to walk into the supernatural to let God use you in a remarkable way? This is it. Fellowship, worship, sacrifice. So write it down. Chew on that this week. Is that true for you? And if not, what's holding you back? Remember the song that we listened to? Like anything that you think about more than God is an idol. Anything that consumes you is an idol. Anything that your money is going towards that's more 
than to blessing others or for being on mission or for thinking outside the box of your own kingdom is an idol. I God rebuke you. This is big. This is big. So I'm going to pray for us, and you've got tons of time in life. Like 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. You've got like 40 minutes. I still count my five when I see a clock. It's okay. No shame. Are you guys with me? And look at me. Be honest. Like, does this excite you? Or is this just, is, is it a drag? <laughs> Sacrifice. Your mom. Like, I, what, I, I don't know. Where are we feeling here? You know? And if it doesn't excite you, watch this. This is really cool. Ask God to make this exciting. Like, there's moments where I don't want to go to the gym. It sounds miserable. It's cold outside. It's early. But then when I get there and I start fellowshipping with the other people in the gym, when I'm running laps, that's sometimes the best worship I can have with God. And it's a sacrifice. But when I'm done, I'm like, ah, oh, I can start my day. I feel good. I'm so glad I went. I'm so glad I did it. And for some of you, if you're doubting me, try it. Be consistent. I think they say after 30 days or something, it becomes a habit. I don't know if that's true, but uh, th this is big. So nod your head if you're with me. We're wanting it to go. Hang out in Acts chapter 2. Man, the book of Acts is so good. It's so good. If you're looking for a book to read, read Acts. If you have any questions, ask your leaders. If it makes no sense, get a commentary. You know what a commentary is? It's brilliant, really smart people who explain it to you like you're a moron. It's awesome. <laughs> You have four cookies, so I'm going to take three, two, right? It's like that kind of language. It's great. I love it. Uh, so, I'm going to pray for us and then go right to groups, okay? God, thank you so much. Like, that's a gift that you give us fellowship with other believers. And, and, and as I started this, I pray for those that don't fall into the category of believers. Like, I, I long for verse 47 of Acts chapter 2 to be true for a lot. They would praise you and join favor of people and watching you add to our numbers daily for those being saved. God, would you do that? I humbly come before you because I know that you can do anything you want. And we ask that. Not, not rolling the dice, but knowing that you can so do it like that. You can change hearts. I can't. God, I pray that you take my, my words and by your Holy Spirit, would you plant it into their hearts? Plant it into my heart. Be with us as we go to groups. God, I pray for the supernatural to happen where these teenagers leave here and they are never the same because of the few moments that we had together. God, I love you. Be with us as we go to groups. Thank you for my leaders. I love them. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray, the only name that can save. Amen.